Hello again. And I'm really grateful that so many people came despite the weather. Um, my name is Robert Schulze. I work at ClickHouse and the core engineering team. And today I want to give you a preview of um, the new and cool and still experimental inverted index feature in ClickHouse. What is this feature good for? Well, let's assume you own a few documents. It does not have to be a library full of books like in the picture, but you can think of a collection of sites or of Word documents. ClickHouse is a column-oriented database. So because of that, you would store your documents consecutively in a column. And you can see that column in the middle of the slide. And it contains document one, document two, and so on and so forth. Each of these documents is conceptually a list of tokens. Um, what is a token? Well, a token is, in the simplest case, just a word. A token can, but can also be a syllable or an engram. Now, let's also assume you like to know which of your documents contain a specific term, for instance, Amsterdam. You will have two options now. You could either linearly scan through your document collection, which will obviously be slow, or you can be smarter and use an index. ClickHouse provides you with a bunch of different secondary index types to choose from. As of today, you could use a min-max, a set, a bloom, an engram bloom, or a token bloom index. All of these index types have different trade-offs, which I will not discuss now in detail. But for our use case, what we want, what we require here is a so-called token level index. A token level index is an index which associates the tokens within a document, within a document with the document that contain this token. So that leaves us with a choice between only two index types, the Ngram bloom filter and the token bloom filter. As you can guess from the name, both index types are based on bloom filters. For those of you who have no idea what a bloom filter is, you can think of a bloom filter as a fingerprint of the original data. And the advantage is it's really compact, really small, so that's nice. But the big disadvantage is that pretty much everything built on a bloom filter is probabilistic. So what this means is it works only in one direction. For instance, a um, end-grain bloom filter index will only be able to tell you if a token is contained in your document collection, but it will not be able to tell you if it is not in your document collection. So that obviously limits the usefulness of both index types. Inverted indexes solve this problem. So they are non-probabilistic token level secondary indexes, and they can be used without any of the previously mentioned restrictions in a rich set of queries. Here's the SQL syntax to create an inverted index over a document column. It's really simple. You just add the uh, inverted index as a normal secondary index. You can also specify the tokenizer um, which determines whether the uh, index should operate at word or at ngram level. The exact syntax for that will um, become more user-friendly, hopefully soon. And then to use the index, you don't have to do anything special again. Um, the index is just automatically picked up by a lot of SQL functions. For example, like predicates, um, has token, uh, equal, not equal, and so on and so forth. OK, let's briefly talk about the design of the index. And I promise I will not bore you with UML class diagrams. So conceptually, every inverted index has two parts. There's always um, a so-called dictionary that's on the left side. And then there are posting lists. They are on the right side. So as you can see on the slide, the dictionary contains all the sorted tokens stored in the index. Every token then points to a posting list. And the posting list is a sorted sequence of document identifiers or document numbers, which are obviously the documents which contain the corresponding token. So what will basically happen at query time is that the system will do a binary search 
on the dictionary to find the right um, posting list and then return all the document numbers. Okay, now, if you are familiar with the theory of inverted indexes, you probably know that there's a lot more metadata that one could store in such an index structure. This will help to speed up certain queries even more. Um, so for the first version, we are not doing this. We decided to keep things simple and to add the more advanced stuff later on. Okay, now, as you can see, the dictionary is sorted, the posting lists are sorted, this creates a lot of opportunity for compression. For instance, um, two consecutive tokens in the dictionary often share a common prefix. So on the slide, the last two tokens in the dictionary, that is wind and winter, they share prefix win. We can take advantage of that and remove all the common fragments and the shared pieces, the shared parts between tokens. And this happens in a compression method called um, minimal finite state transducers, which we apply to the dictionary. It sounds fairly complicated. To be honest, it is fairly complicated, but it works really well. So um, likewise, we compress the posting list with a compression method called roaring bitmaps. Unfortunately, I don't have the time now to talk about these techniques in detail. They are really interesting. And if you like to know more, let's talk after the presentations. Okay, similar to the other secondary indexes, the inverted index exists per part and the merge of two parts also recreates the index. I will also say that the inverted index can get fairly big, um, either the posting list or the dictionary that depends on the statistical distribution of the tokens. So for that reason, we wanted to avoid a situation where the entire index has to be um, loaded into memory. And we achieved that by splitting the index into multiple segments. Of course, you will be able to configure the segment size. So by doing so, only pieces of the, of the index are loaded into memory at a time. You can think of a segment as um, like a self-contained index, which covers a subset of the rows in the part. And then every row in the part is eventually covered by an inverted in index segment. <laughs> okay, as you can also see on the slide, the inverted index writes three files to disk. There is a metadata file that's on the left side and it knows about all the segments. There is a dictionary file, which contains all the segment dictionaries in the form of um, minimized finite state transducers. And then there's a posting list file, which contains all the segment posting lists in the form of roaring bitmaps. Okay, let's do some measurements. I made a small experiment and I imported 28 million comments posted on Hacker News and they were written between 2006 and 2021. So the size of the compressed um, comment column was 5.4 gigabyte and the inverted index was 1.1 gigabyte in size. There's currently a bug in the code, I will admit that, so it will not show the precise size in the um, uh, skipping index uh, monitoring view, so I calculated this number by hand. I then ran two simple queries, the first query returns all the comments which contain Amsterdam. And the matching was case insensitive. Without inverted index, the runtime was 1.13 seconds on my system. With inverted index, it was 0 0.87 seconds. Now you can say that's not a dramatic difference. And I would agree. The reason is simply that the token Amsterdam is surprisingly um, frequent. So it occurred in about two thirds of all granules. So let's try a less frequent term and search for ClickHouse. And as you can see, we need exactly the same time without index, but if we can utilize an inverted index, the runtime reduces from 1.13 seconds to just 0 0.25 seconds. And that's quite a nice um, speed up. Okay. Uh, to summarize, inverted indexes open a new use case for ClickHouse. 
Uh, we have seen a lot of community interest, which was really motivating. And we target, we, we aim for a stable release in summer. Yeah, and if you have any more questions, feel free to talk to me. I will be around. Thank you.